Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week I want to talk to you about a really cool native prairie plant, Rattlesnake Master. And um, it was called Rattlesnake Master because it was erroneously believed that the root could be made into a cure for rattlesnake bites. The um, Latin name is Eryngium yuccifolium and that's because the foliage looks a lot like yucca plants. So you would think this belongs in the desert, um, someplace dry, but it's actually one of our um, native perennial tall grass prairie species. And uh, it is in the carrot family. And it's native to um, the extreme southern portions of Michigan. It's actually state threatened. So when you see this in native plant sales in our state, it's likely from um, out of state uh, genetic material. Um, and it has a coefficient of conservatism of 10, as high as it gets. So um, if you do see this um, in Southern Michigan in a prairie, that's a pretty special thing. Um, it occurs across the Eastern US from Minnesota to Michigan, south to Texas through Florida. And um, its habitats include uh, prairies, especially wetter ones, uh, wet meadows, and then the open borders of um, marshes and swamps. And as far as um, culture goes, it does prefer full sun and it'll grow in shadier spots, but it tends to get um, very spindly and when in full bloom, it'll flop over. Um, you also don't want to grow it in too like fertile, really over fertilized soils. It'll also get very leggy, weak, um, and, and tend to flop. So um, it likes um, moist to slightly dry um, soils, and it can take various textures. So if you have loam, sand, clay, gravel, um, it can handle all of those situations. It just likes um, uh, it to be well drained and not have like ponding standing water. It doesn't do well in those situations. Other than that, it's relatively easy to grow and it's not really subject to foliar diseases um, or uh, many insect pests. So um, at full maturity, it gets two to five feet tall. Um, it blooms mid to late summer and uh, those flowers, these um, dense balls, uh, look attractive for two months or more. Um, so blooms over a longer period, and, um, but sometimes that doesn't occur until the second or even third uh, growing season. So if you're buying really young material, you may just have to wait a year or two to see those flowers. Um, and uh, as far as identification goes, one of the main keys is this yucca-like um, blue-gray uh, foliage and the leaves have these very widely spaced um, spines or teeth along the leaf margin. So nothing else, no, no other native plants in Michigan look anything like this. So this is a pretty um, easy one to identify. It has this very stout central stalk um, that doesn't really branch till you get up towards the top of the plant right under the inflorescence. The leaves are um, alternate. Uh, most are concentrated around the base of the plant, um, but you will see sporadic leaves along the stem. And those leaves, typical of things in the carrot family, um, wrap around or clasp the stem and they have um, parallel venation. So you can feel that if I run my fingernail across there, I can feel that the veins are all running um, base to tip on the leaves. And um, they're very strap-like, they're stiff, um, especially the lower ones tend to curve back down towards the ground. And um, like I said, they have those spiny, widely spaced teeth along the margins. They can get up to two and a half to, to three feet long and uh, two and a half inches wide. And um, the plant overall is fairly hairless. The inflorescence is made up of several very prickly um, 
balls of flowers that are um, greenish white in color. And each of those is a half inch to an inch across. Each of those um, balls of really dense flowers. And um, each flower is surrounded by prickly brack. So you can see that in this flower head. Um, and it has five white petals, a divided pistil, and uh, white stamens with brown anthers. And uh, they're um, in, especially in full sun, the flowers have a very sweet honey-like scent. And um, the Native Americans, uh, some tribes would dry this plant and use it uh, for ceremonial rattles. Overall, the root system of the plant is a central tap root, and um, the plant generally dies back um, after it flowers, but then you'll get offset shoots coming up from that root system. So you end up with a clump of um, plants in an area. And uh, that deep tap root, though, does make it difficult to transplant. So once you have it in the ground, um, I wouldn't try, I wouldn't try really moving it. Um, but if it is in ideal conditions, it'll pretty readily self-seed um, and reproduce for you that way. As far as uh, faunal associations go, the flowers really provide um, a lot for our native pollinators, both nectar and pollen. And the flowers are visited by both short and long tongue bees butterflies, skippers, moths, wasps, uh, flies, beetles, and plant bugs. So lots of different things. Um, this species is also the host plant for the rare um, rattlesnake master borer moth, which bores into the stem and eats the, the pith tissues and things like that. So um, it is overall pretty coarse foliage, um, prickly, the flowers are prickly, so um, it's not really favored by mammals. Um, they might nibble on the leaf ends a little bit, but um, you shouldn't have uh, a lot of browsing damage on this particular plant. And I think with its um, really <clears throat> unique color, unique structure and form, nothing else will look like this in your garden. It makes a nice um, accent plant or um, border uh, when planted in mass. Uh, and it provides really excellent pollinator support. So great for a butterfly garden, um, a rain garden, as long as you don't get a lot of ponding of water. And I think you should consider adding it to your uh, native landscape. Take care and have a good week.